Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. It's perhaps no surprise that given that the first Director General, that wouldn't have been his title then, of the BBC was a doer Presbyterian Scot, uh, Lord Reith, that the original motto uh, of the BBC was nation shall speak peace unto nation, which is an adaptation from the book of Micah, uh, chapter 4, verse 3. Uh, the BBC was innovative when it started, and it remains innovative in the modern digital age. Uh, Jackson Carlaw wasn't entirely incorrect in his response to my attempted intervention. Uh, I appeared on the BBC on the shores of Loch Ern when Jackson Carlaw was three years old. Uh, but of course, Jackson Carlaw missed some of the most spectacular and impressive pieces of broadcasting that the BBC used to do. And the one which, uh, in his failure to accept an intervention, he showed most deeply uh, that omission was, of course, on the Sunday afternoon, the Brains Trust. So if he had uh, watched that, which was a, a wonderful programme, it was where Jakob Bronowski uh, was first brought to the public attention. And he probably produced, wrote, and was the inspiration of uh, my absolutely peak BBC programme, which was The Ascent of Man. Uh, part of it actually moves me to tears when he is standing in, uh, in uh, a concentration camp and he reaches down into a puddle and picks up the mud from the puddle and lo just looks at it and then looks at the camera and says, this is my family. There is no more stirring piece of television than Jakob Bronowski, who came to us uh, via the Brains Trust, which only the BBC, in all honesty, uh, could have uh, considered bringing. Um, now, of course, it may be that it's another member of the Brains Trust that Jackson Carlo is related to, uh, that uh, Tory MP, uh, Gerald Nabarro. Uh, he will be hoping, if he remembers anything about him, that he's not. The BBC also, of course, uh, has the affection of people on these benches for a programme which was first broadcast on the 24th of November 1962. Uh, that was the week that was. It brought us uh, David Frost for the first time. It brought us the wonderful cartoonist Timothy Birdsall. But fundamentally what it brought us was a satirical venue in which it was possible to probe the declining uh, strength of the then Conservative government under Harold Macmillan and probably contributed quite significantly uh, to the ending of that period of Tory rule. So we have a lot to be grateful for uh, to the BBC. And of course, the, that was the week that was. As a youngster, I was particularly grateful to because it was late on a Saturday night and I was allowed to stay up to watch it for the first time that late. So it was a wonderful programme for me. But it also illustrated something that we've kind of lost in modern broadcasting. It actually was of a length that was appropriate to what was going on in the world that week. In other words, if there was more going on, the program just kept going because it was live. It, some of it was actually improvised on, uh, during the course of the program. And I think the rigid uh, timetables that box off programs today mean we've lost some of the spontaneity uh, and spark uh, that we had uh, from that uh, program. Let me just say a few uh, general things. The BBC produces one of the first the best current affairs programmes that comes from Scotland, and it's done so for some time, and that's Yorpa. Um, it is subtitled, but it is a Gaelic programme, and of course it enables us to look through Scottish eyes at things that are going on elsewhere, particularly in Europe, but occasionally uh, beyond. And only the BBC has the option to do that kind of programme. So we really love the BBC for the things it's able to do. It's able to... Uh, pick up difficult subjects, it's able to bring them to us. Now, I want to just make a, a couple of points uh, which I hope the BBC, who will be watching this, I'm sure, will take on board. BBC Scotland's Radio Scotland is the poor relation, not simply in terms of the funding and resources that are made available to us, it's actually poor relation in terms of how it's delivered to us in the modern digital age. 
DAB radio that BBC Scotland is on is not delivered via any of the BBC multiplexes. It's delivered on commercial multiplexes. There are two effects that stem from that. One of which is, if you're in a car with a DAB radio, it won't retune from multiplex to multiplex as you go across Scotland. Whereas all the London BBC radio channels, you can continue to listen across Scotland uh, because uh, of, of that. It also, because of that, doesn't have an FM fallback. If you lose the digital signal, there isn't enough information provided to your radio set to allow it to fall back to FM like uh, Radio 4 does. Radio 4 is one of the crowning glories of the BBC and many of us in Scotland, like myself, listen to it. But it has its failings in relation to Scotland and in relation to the rest of the UK. I give one example in the very brief time that's left. I was listening to a piece on Radio 4 about Sunday trading in England and comments that were being made and how the world would fall apart if uh, shops were allowed to open ad lib on Sundays. No reference was made to the fact uh, for English audiences that in Scotland we'd had Sunday trading for many years and the world hadn't collapsed. But even more fundamentally for Scots listeners, there was no explanation of what the situation in England was in relation to Sunday trading. I didn't quite understand it until I went home and looked it up. So it both failed to represent Scotland in an English debate and failed to explain an English issue, which was of interest to us in a Scottish context. That is simply a metropolitan error that the BBC uh, has to address. Let's hope the BBC continue uh, to reflect the world to Scotland, but also to reflect Scotland to the world. Presiding officer.